Hi guys, I'm going to talk to you about the law of conservation of mass, which is basically balancing chemical reactions. So these chemical reactions or chemical equations are made up of chemical compounds. And the law basically states that whatever you put in, you get out. So the same amount of mass occurs on the reactant side as on the product side. So first of all, chemical change is something that produces new compounds or new elements that you didn't see in the reactant side. For example, ammonia synthesis. Dr. Fritz Haber, which you learned about um, in World War I, he created chemical weapons, uh, pioneered chemical weapons in the form of chlorine gas. He also went on to create a process to produce ammonia uh, which could then be used to fertilize crops and plants, uh, which was a huge um, saver for millions of people who were starving, um, because what they used to do is they used to take feces, so they were scooping feces everywhere, piling it up, and using that as fertilizer. So that was extremely inefficient. Um, so to the creation of ammonia really, really helped people uh, prevent people from starving. And that's because the natural process of creating fertilizer is letting um, your crops die and then fertilize the area that it's on. But of course, we harvest those crops and take it away. So we need something to replace it, um, to go back into the soil, to put nitrogen back into the soil um, in, in order to fertilize the new crops that are growing there. So in this chemical reaction that you see here, you see uh, nitrogen and three hydrogens create two ammonias plus heat energy. First of all, if you're looking at this chemical equation, the left side is always the reactants. The right side, we call the products. Both sides need to be balanced. And we balance it by having the same uh, amount of mass on the left side as the right side. Because in a closed system, none of that matter can just escape. And none of it just comes out of nowhere. So it's just a rearrangement of the bonds of these different elements that put them into different configurations. So you can't all of a sudden have some new element that comes out of it that was never in there before. So that's the basic, that's the law of conservation of mass. Okay. So as we can see in this ammonia synthesis, we have nitrogen on the left, and of course we need to have nitrogen on the right. So that nitrogen on the right came from the nitrogen on the left, except it's just reconfigured. So we had N2, two nitrogens together on the left. Now we have two nitrogens on the right, but in the form of ammonia, NH3. So you can see how bonds were broken and then reformed into other types of chemicals. But none of it's gained or lost we have conservation of mass and the same number of atoms on the left as on the right. So this is just showing a closed system. An open system would allow matter to go into or out of this system. But if it's closed, like with a stopper, um, then you would expect that the same amount of um, matter would come out of this reaction as went into the reaction. Okay, so mass cannot be created or destroyed. And that's why we write a chemical equation. When we write it, both the left side and right side must be balanced. So let's take a look at an example of how you would balance it. So first of all, when we do this, uh, you're going to see some symbols and some of the symbols we're going to use indicate what state these different chemicals are in. So S meaning solid, L meaning liquid, G means gas, and aqueous means that it's been dissolved in water. Okay. 
And the way this game is played out, you're basically going to balance these equations by um, putting coefficients, a number, in front of each chemical compound so that both the left and the right are completely balanced. They have the same number of each element on the left and the right. So in this chemical equation, which involves magnesium plus oxygen, arrow, and with the arrow, we, we call that yields, that means produces, uh, magnesium oxide. So magnesium plus oxygen yields magne magnesium oxide. So solid magnesium combined with gaseous oxygen yields magnesium oxide, which is a solid. Okay. So this is how we're going to balance it. The first thing I would do, the first step, I would actually draw a line exactly where that yield symbol is, that arrow, to separate the reactants from the products. Because if you remember the law of conservation of mass, whatever elements you have on the left side, that same number should appear on the right side. So, Keep in mind that we're only going to be changing the number that goes in front of each of these compounds. Okay? Don't ever touch the superscripts or sorry, the subscripts like the O2. We're not going to change that. You can only change the number that's in front. And if the number is 1, then we don't write that number. Okay? Because 1 O2 is just the same as O2. Okay, so after drawing the line down from the arrow to separate the reactants from the products, I'm going to write out all the elements that I see on the left side. So first we have magnesium, Mg, and we also have oxygen. So you look at your periodic table, if you're not familiar with these elements, and you figure out what elements you have on the left side. But of course, because of the law of conservation of mass, you should have the same elements on the right side. So, and if you don't, then there's something wrong with this uh, chemical equation. But we have Mg on the left, and we also have O, sorry, on the right, and O on the right as well. Okay. Now, for each one, I'm going to write the starting number. So I'm going to count how many magnesium atoms I have on the left. So right now, I have only one magnesium atom. For oxygen, I have two oxygen atoms. And you can see that because I have this subscript of two, O2. That means I have two atoms of oxygen. The starting numbers on the right side, I have one atom of magnesium, and I have one atom of oxygen. You can see the subscripts of both of those. There's no subscript, so that means there's one of each. Okay. Now, this is how the balancing game is played. Now you're going to look at the, the side. Well, magnesium is all balanced, so that's great. But you can see oxygen is not balanced. So we're going to go to the side with the, the lowest number of that atom, oxygen. It's the right side. And we're going to now write a coefficient. And I'm going to change my color here. I'm going to write a coefficient in front of this chemical compound magnesium oxide. So I'm going to write 2 to try to balance out the magnesium. Uh, sorry, balance out the oxygen. So writing a 2 in front of MgO, that gives this uh, right side 2 magnesiums and two oxygens. Okay, so that's perfect. Oxygen is balanced out. But as you noticed, now magnesium is not balanced. Okay, so we're going to keep playing this game. Magnesium is not balanced. You go to the side with the lowest number of magnesium, which is the left side, and we're going to write a number in front of magnesium that will make it balance out. So I'm going to write two in front of magnesium solid there. And you can see 
I need to change this tally to two, now we have balanced out magnesium and oxygen. Okay, so our final answer uh, is going to be, oopsies, I just erased the coefficient. Our final answer is going to be 2mg Two mg solid plus uh, one O two gas yields two mgo, which is also solid. Okay, let's go into the next question. So this mentions some diatomic and polyatomic elements. So these are important to keep in mind because whenever you see hydrogen, nitrogen, etc., all of these ones that you see here, these all exist as diatomic. That means they always exist um, in nature in pairs. Okay. So if a, if the question asks you to to place hydrogen into the equation, then you always write H2. It never exists on its own. Similarly, sulfur and phosphorus, these polyatomic elements, always exist like this, S8 and P4. Okay? So let's go on. More examples of balancing. Let me zoom in. So again, first step, I'm going to draw a line separating the reactants from the products. Write out the elements that I see, hydrogen and oxygen. Same thing on the right side. And again, if it's not the same thing, then your chemical, chemical equation has been written wrong because you can't just introduce a new element that comes from nowhere. On the left side, we have two hydrogens and two oxygens. We can tell from the subscripts that we see here. Okay. Um, on the right side, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So now what do we do? So hydrogen looks like it's balanced. We're going to work on oxygen. Oxygen, there's a uh, it's lower on the right side, so I'm going to go to the right side. Let me change my color here so you can see more easily. And I'm going to put a coefficient in front of this compound in order to change this oxygen number to 2, because it's just going to double it. But it's also, because H2O is one molecule, putting a coefficient of 2 in front means we have double the H2O. That means there's going to be 4 hydrogens. Well, that balanced out the oxygen, but it kind of messed up the hydrogen. But really easily, you can keep playing the game. Go to the left side, the lower side in terms of hydrogen, and we can put a 2 coefficient of 2 in front of the H2, and now that becomes 4. All right, now it's balanced. That's a balanced chemical equation. Two hydrogens plus one oxygen yields two waters. All right, let's move this up. Nitrogen and hydrogen yield ammonia. Okay, so remember what I said about nitrogen and hydrogen being diatomic. So we're going to rewrite this because uh, we can't balance words. So we're going to write nitrogen. And we're not going to worry, these are going to be gases, but and ammonia is going to be a liquid, but we're not going to worry about that. I'm just going to write nitrogen plus hydrogen. These are both diatomic, so we have to write N2 and H2, not just N plus H. Yield ammonia, which is NH3. Okay, so... At this point, to balance it, draw a line down 
and write out the elements. Nitrogen, hydrogen, same thing on the right. There are two nitrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the left. On the right side, there's only one nitrogen and three hydrogens. So to balance this, again, just take a look at one of the elements first. Let's take a look at nitrogen, try to balance that out first. There's two on the left, one on the right. So you go to the lower side, which is the right, and we're going to change this so that it balances. So we're going to put a two, a coefficient of two in front of the NH3. So this changes the nitrogen to two, but don't forget that it also affects the H3. So it's going to, instead of H3, um, sorry, instead of three hydrogens, now it's going to be double of that, which is six. Six hydrogens, because two times three is six. All right. Now nitrogen is balanced. Hydrogen is not. Go to the lower side in terms of hydrogen. That's the left side. So for the left side, we can already see what we could do here. To change it so that it balances, we're going to put a 3 in front of the H2. So if we triple the amount of hydrogen, now we're going to have 6 hydrogen on the left side. Okay, so now both sides are balanced, and that follows the law of conservation of mass, because the law of conservation of mass says that however many atoms you had at the start in the reactants that you put together, that's how many atoms of those elements that you should have at the end. Okay, so in order for this reaction to actually turn into ammonia, you need nitrogen, N2, plus three hydrogens, and then you yield two ammonias. All right, next question. So here we have uh, calcium chloride, um, silver nitrate, yielding silver chloride, and calcium nitrate. Okay, so now we get into some brackets. And I'll try to clearly explain what's going on here. It's just a matter of counting atoms. Let's first of all write out all of the elements that we see. You can identify elements by looking at the periodic table and just knowing these elements, um, but also the, the symbols give you a clue. So whenever you have a capital letter followed by a lowercase letter, you know that is the symbol for one of the elements. If, like in the case of nitrate here, you have N capital and O capital, you know those are two different elements, nitrogen and oxygen, okay? So here are our elements that I see on the left side. Calcium, chlorine, silver, nitrogen, oxygen. OK, on the right side, I'm going to write it in the same order so that when I look across, I can more easily balance them. and making sure that I'm not missing any. OK, it's just nicer when they're lined up like this. All right, next step, count how many there are. So on the left side, calcium, there's one. For chlorine, there are two. Silver, there's one. Nitrogen, there's one. And oxygen, because it says O3, there's three. On the right side, the starting numbers, calcium, there is one. Chlorine, there is one. Silver, one. Nitrogen, let's take a look at nitrogen. So nitrogen exists in NO3, okay. However, you can see that it's in a pair of parentheses here and a subscript of two, that means double. So that means there's 
two groups of nitrate, two groups of NO3. So that means there's actually two nitrogens on the right side. Okay, so that's, this nitrogen is multiplied by two. So I'm going to write um, two nitrogens. Now, how many oxygens are there? Well, let me just erase this. If you look at oxygen, there's O3, so there's three oxygens inside this molecule, and then it's doubled because of this bracket and the subscript 2 on the outside. So there's actually six oxygen on the right side, for starters. Okay. Now let's balance. Calcium is balanced, chlorine is not balanced. So to balance chlorine, we're going to uh, put a two in front of this. And now chlorine is balanced, but it also doubled the amount of silver. Okay. Uh, one huge mistake people make sometimes is they, they balance one thing and they just leave the other elements. You can't. If you have a two, coefficient of 2 in front of AgCl, you have to uh, change the amount for Ag as well as Cl because it affects both. Okay, so chlorine's balanced, silver is now unbalanced. So we're going to go to the left side and put a 2 in front of AgNO3 and retally everything. So recalibrating. There's going to be two silver. Now there's two nitrogen. And now there is six oxygen. Well, what do you know? If you look at all of the numbers now, calcium, chlorine, silver, nitrogen, oxygen, all the way across, they're all balanced. So this is the correct formula, or sorry, the correct equation for this chemical reaction. So we're done. All right, let's look at the next one. Lithium. Okay, so let's just get to work here. Draw a line, Li, lithium, bromine. There's one lithium, two bromine. Same elements lined up on the right side to make it easy to see, one of each. Bromine, there needs to be two, so I'm going to change this, change this coefficient or add the coefficient of two. That changes the amount of lithium and changes the amount of bromine. So now the lithium is off balance. I'm going to go to the left side, put a two in front of Li, and now it's balanced. So this is a balanced equation. Next question. Al, Cu, copper, and O, oxygen. There seems to be one of each. On the right side, same elements. And we're going to put them in the same order so we can compare left and right. Um, there's two aluminums. There are, there's one copper, and there are three oxygens. Okay, let's balance. Left side, put a two in front of AL. Now, aluminum's balanced. Um, oxygen, we're gonna put a three in front of CUO. And now um, we triple the amount of oxygen on the left, but we also triple the amount of copper on the left because it affects both in that compound. So the only thing that's not balanced is copper. So go to the right side. We're going to put a three in front of Cu, and now copper is balanced. Everything's balanced. This is a balanced equation with the coefficients two, three, one, and three. Next. Okay, this looks complicated, but just do the same thing and break it down.
So let's take a look here. We have lead. We have nitrogen. Figure out all the different elements that you see. We have oxygen. We have oxygen in two places. So I'm going to actually split them up. And that'll make it easier to see. OK, so we have oxygen on, on in this compound, lead nitrate, and then oxygen and lead phosphate over here. So I'm going to I'm going to put another oxygen over here under this other compound. Um, OK, I'm going to put K and P here as well. OK, so lead, there's one lead. How many nitrogens? There's one nitrogen inside the compound. And there's a two subscript outside. So there's two nitrogens. O3, so there's three oxygens. And then multiplied by two because of the subscript. So this is six. Three potassiums. Uh, one phosphorus and four oxygens over here in this compound. So there's, in total, 10 oxygens on the left. But I'm splitting them because that makes it easier to count them. And you'll see later on. You have to see with the example how this works um, in terms of the splitting. OK, so I'm going to write everything on the right in the same order. Oh, and on the on the right side, we also split the oxygen because they are in two different compounds as well. So I'm going to actually just write everything in the same order as on the left to make it easier to see. OK, so PB on the right side, there's three LEDs. Nitrogen, there's one nitrogen. Oxygen. For KNO3, there's three here. Um, K, potassium, there's one. P, uh, right here, P is one times two, so there's two. And then oxygens on the right compound, there are eight, because four times two is eight. So on the right side, there's a total of 11 oxygens. Let's balance. OK, let's start with lead. Um, if I look at lead, it's three on the right, one on the left. So I'm going to put a three in front of that. That changes this to three. Um, it also changes the nitrogen. So originally, there's two nitrogens. I'm going to triple that. And now there's six. For the oxygen in the left compound, um, there originally was six. I tripled that. And now there's 18. OK. So that balances out the lead, but it doesn't help with everything else. So let's take a look at nitrogen. Nitrogen, on the right side, it's lower. So I'm going to put a six in front here. Now potassium, potassium will become six, nitrogen six, oxygen in the left compound, I'm going to change this one, and it becomes 18. I feel like we're getting close. OK, let's move on to okay, lead, ni uh, nitrogen, and oxygen. They're all balanced. Now let's go to potassium, K. On the left side, it's lower because it's got three. So I'm going to put a two in front to make this into the same number as on the right, which is six. But that changes the amount of, amount of uh, phosphorus. So now phosphorus will double. And the oxygen in the right compound will also double. And what do you know? It looked complicated at the beginning, but through the process of going back and forth, 
and do it doing it calmly and working the problem, we actually figured the answer out. So the coefficients are 3, 2, 6, and 1. That's balanced. Great. Next one. Nitrogen monoxide gas reacts with oxygen to yield nitrogen dioxide gas. Okay, so let's write this out. Nitrogen monoxide is a covalent compound, and just by how it's named, it should look like this, NO. So this is a gas. It's told us it's a gas. We're going to put a small g in brackets there, parentheses. Nitrogen monoxide gas reacts with oxygen. We know oxygen is always O2 because it's diatomic. Well, it's going to yield nitrogen dioxide gas, nitrogen dioxide, NO2, nitrogen dioxide. All right, so let's balance this. Left side, nitrogen, uh, and then we have oxygen. Oxygen is split up into two compounds, so I'm going to write another oxygen here. So there's one of each here, and then there's two oxygens in this compound. Same setup on the right, except oxygen is not split up, so I'm going to keep it together. One and two. All right, so let's balance. Nitrogen is fine, let's work on the oxygens. We have three oxygens on the left, so obviously that side is, is uh, larger. So on the right side, let's see what we can do. Let's try putting a two in front of NO2. That will change the nitrogen to two and the oxygen to four. Let's look on the left side. So in order to balance this out, I'm going to put a 2 in front of the nitrogen. That'll make that 2, and it'll make oxygen 2. And now we're balanced, because we have two nitrogens on either side and four oxygens on either side. OK. Potassium sulfate silver nitrate. Okay, so we're going to write potassium, potassium K2SO4. Oops. And silver nitrate, AgNO3. Both dissolve in water, so they're both aqueous. React to form solid silver sulfate. Ag2SO4, and that is a uh, solid. plus KNO3 and that's aqueous. Okay, let's double check all of the compounds, make sure the equations, the formulas are balanced. K2SO4, AgNO3. Good. And if you need a review to balance and make sure these are the correct compounds, please take a look at the review that I've posted. All right. Let's balance this. Write out the elements.
Okay, oxygen is split again into two compounds, so we're going to split them so that we can balance them separately. I'm going to write the same thing on the, the right side. Oxygen on the right side is also split up. Okay, starting numbers. There's two potassium, one sulfur, four oxygens. One silver, one nitrogen, three oxygens. Potassium, there's one on the right, one sulfur, four oxygens. And uh, for silver, there's two one nitrogen, and three oxygens. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's start with potassium then. If we start with potassium, potassium is not balanced. Right side, let's add a coefficient of two. So now there are two potassiums, two nitrogens, and there's going to be six oxygens. Let's work on silver on the left side. We're going to put a two to make two silvers, two nitrogens, and six oxygens. And comparing both sides, it's balanced. That's it. OK, next. Let's take a look at this practice. I'm just going to use blue ink from now on. Here we go. Hydrogen, there's two. Fluorine, there's two. One and one. This one's pretty easy. Balanced. Iron combines with oxygen, OK? Iron is Fe. Combines with oxygen, which is always diatomic, O2, which forms iron 2 oxide. Iron 2 oxide, so that's FeO. Um, so because um, Fe has a, iron 2 means Fe has a charge of plus 2. Oxygen always have, has a charge of minus 2. So that becomes FeO. All right, let's balance these. I'm going to put a coefficient of 2 on the right side. And then two on the iron on the left side. And that seems to balance it. Next question. Oops, I'm changing colors. B, N, so boron, nitrogen, they're both one. And fluorine, there's two. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. OK, so I'm going to go and boron is already balanced. So I'm going to go with doubling the nitrogen on the left. But that also changes boron. Now what? Let's, let's try to balance boron. Um, so on the right side, Oops, I should do this first. So that changes boron to 2 and fluorine to 6. On the left side, let's balance out fluorine by putting a 3 in front of this. This becomes 6. Now everything is balanced. OK, 
Okay, let's let me change color here. Let's figure out what these formula, the formula of these compounds are. So question number four, potassium iodide, so that's Ki. plus chlorine. Chlorine is always diatomic, so Cl2 yields potassium chloride, KCl, plus iodine. Iodine is also diatomic, I2. All right. Draw a line. K, I, Cl, K, I, Cl. Okay, let's balance out iodine. We're going to put a coefficient of two on the left. That chain that doubles potassium. That also doubles iodine. Um, chlorine is unbalanced, so that's double chlorine, that doubles the potassium, and that doubles chlorine, and now they're all balanced. Okay, this one. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen is split. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen here is also split. Okay, so let's start with carbon. Since we need to get nine, I'm going to put nine over here. Now oxygen here will be 18. Let's look at hydrogen. We need six hydrogens, so let's put a three here. And that changes this oxygen to three. So carbon and hydrogen are both balanced. It's just the oxygen now. On the right side, 21. We have 21 oxygens. On the left side, we only have six. OK. So this is four. How do we get 21? OK, let's try. OK, so this is where I think I'm going to just start guessing and checking, because it's better than not doing anything. Um, I just figured out there's 21 on the right, six on the left. Even if we got rid of the four, there you can't have an odd number by multiplying by two. So let's just try, since there are no coefficients in front of the first compound, let's just try throwing a two in front. If we end up with numbers that are too big, we can always reduce them all later. So let's go with two, so that makes this 18, that makes this 12, and that will be eight. Okay, so now we have to compensate for that by, on the right side, we need to make, make there be 18 carbons, so I'm going to Erase the coefficient I had there before, change it to 18. And thirty-six. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-six oxygens. Yikes. Um, let's take a look at the hydrogens. 
uh, since we have 12 on the left, we need to double the ones on the right. So I'm going to erase the three. And, and uh, to make it 12, I'm going to put six. So that'll make this into 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. Okay, so 18 carbons, 12 hydrogens. Um, we've got a ton of oxygens on the right. We're going to try to match it up on the left. So 36 plus 6, 42. How are we going to get 42? 42 minus 8 is 34. 34 is an even number, and so that's perfect. Okay, so that means we're going to put a 17 here to make this 34. And that's perfect. Now there's 42 oxygens on the left and 42 on the right. 12 hydrogens and 18 carbons. So that um, actually worked out. So sometimes you need to just throw in, throw in a number um, and see if it works out or solve it mathematically. Um, sometimes you can do that, but you know, there I was just kind of stuck and just wanted to just see what would happen if I put in a two. In the end, if you get giant numbers, sometimes you can just reduce all of them, like divide all of them by two or something. In this case, we have two, 17, 18, six. Those are the perfect numbers for balancing. Next. Magnesium plus copper two, so okay. So I'm gonna change the color of my pen. Magnesium, so Mg plus copper 2 sulfate, CuSO4, yields magnesium sulfate plus copper. It's already balanced. Yay. Okay, move on. Okay. Let's write out all the elements. Okay, so we start off with one, two, six, uh, eight, one, and the nitrogen on the other compound on the right is two. Okay, same thing on the product side. On the product side, there's two nitrogens in the same compound. You can see this one and this one. So just watch for that. So in total, there's two.
Okay. So if you look at all of the counts for each of these, cadmium's already balanced, so don't touch cadmium. Nitrogen is not balanced. So let's start with nitrogen. There's four on the left and two on the right. I'm going to put a two on the right here to make this four. Um, that also affects hydrogen. So if hydrogen, now there's eight. And oxygen, now there is six. And look at that. It actually balances everything out. OK, let's move on. So this question, water, H2O, reacts with powdered sodium oxide. Powdered sodium oxide. Okay, sodium has a charge of one, oxygen has a charge of negative two, so Na2O. To produce a solution, okay, so maybe we should put this in liquid. It's a powdered sodium oxide, so that's S solid, to produce a solution of sodium hydroxide. So NaOH, and that's a solution, so it's dissolved in water is what that means, aqueous. All right. H, O, and A, and O is split. Let's take a look at balancing hydrogen first. So if we balance hydrogen, we put a two in front of NaOH. So now there's two hydrogens, but there's also two oxygens and there's two sodiums. Two hydrogens, two oxygens, that's balanced. Calcium, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen is split. There's one hydrogen, or so one calcium, two oxygens, because it's in the parentheses and doubled, two hydrogens, one nitrogen, one chlorine and four hydrogens on the right side. Let's write the same elements out here. OK. There's one calcium, two, uh, sorry, one oxygen, oh, hydrogen split. As part of NH3, there's three hydrogens. As part of water, there's two hydrogens. One nitrogen, two CLs. So let's take a look at maybe balancing oxygen first. So if we go and put a two in front of H2O here, that means there's going to be four hydrogens and two oxygens. OK. Let's look at chlorine. Let's look at doubling chlorine on the left. If I put a two here, we're going to double the nitrogen double the hydrogen here, so that becomes eight, 
and doubling the chlorine. So one calcium, two oxygens, eight, nine, ten, ten hydrogens on the left, seven hydrogens on the right. Okay, so it's still not balanced. Let's work on nitrogen on the right. Let's double the nitrogen. Let's put a two in front. So that doubles the nitrogen. So now they're balanced. And also doubles this. So now we have 10 hydrogens on the right and 10 hydrogens on the left. Everything else looks like it's balanced as well. Cool. Last question. Piece of metallic zinc is in blue solution. Okay, so metallic zinc is solid zinc. So we're going to put Zn solid placed in a blue solution of copper 2 sulfate. Copper 2, that means 2 plus sulfate is 2 minus, so it's CuSO4, and it's a solution, so it's aqueous. That gives you brown layer of metallic that seems like a solid, so CuS, and a clear solution of zinc sulfate. balance this. Set in C U S and O. One, 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 and four. One, one, Uh, I don't know why I have parentheses. That's not quite right. So zinc sulfate ZnSO4. There. Um, 1S and 4 oxygens. Oh, it's balanced. Okay, I guess that's it. We're done.